Fog everywhere. Fog up the river where it flows among green airs and meadows. Fog down the river where it rolls defiled among the tears of shipping. And the water said pollutions of a great and dirty city. Chance people on the bridges, peeping over the parapets into another sky of fog, but fog all around them, as if they were up in a balloon and hanging in the misty clouds. Bleak House, Charles Dickens. On a cold December 4th in 1952, Christmas spirit was in the air, but something else was too. On that very day, London came face to face with the killer fog. Any fog would cause an increase in deaths, but this was sudden. You see, in most cases, those people would be taken into hospital. But this came like a killer in the night. The Great Smog of London was an unfortunate tragedy that was disastrous to many civilians. It caused the deaths of thousands, damaged the environment, and created havoc to fog over London. Thankfully, it disappeared in a few days, and the government soon made a solution to help alleviate this disaster. What is the Killer Fog? The Killer Fog, also known as the Great Smog of London, was a deadly event which occurred in 1952. It left tens of thousands of people dead. It is the 10th deadliest disaster in Great Britain and Ireland based on the number of deaths. Although it may seem like London should learn from its mistakes, there was another smog in 1962 which killed approximately 750 people. And before that, there were minor smogs in 1873, 1880, and 1890. But we're focusing on the worst one, 1952's Great Smog of London. The harsh conditions. It's a warm fog. It was wrapped around you. It was, it was all possessing. It was smelly, it was dirty, it was black. On December 7th, the fog was so dense there was little to no sunlight seen and people could only see approximately five feet in front of them. Some people have reported that they couldn't even see their own feet. People walking had to feel around to figure out where they were, and they had to be careful of the greasy black ooze that was on sidewalks. The smog left their faces black, similar to how coal miners would look after coming out from the mines. Citizens didn't realize how serious of a matter this was because they were used to smog-like conditions. Stan Cribb, who was present at the time of the tragedy, remembers being stunned by the blackness of the gathering fog. After a few minutes, he couldn't see the curb from his spot behind the wheel. After a few more minutes, Tom Cribb, his uncle, got out and started walking in front of the hearse to keep his nephew on the road. He carried a powerful hurricane lantern in one hand, but it was useless. It's like you were blind, he says. How was it caused? When factories emit smoke, it creates smoke clouds made of sulfuric acid. When fog is in the air, which is simply water suspended in the atmosphere, it makes it hard to see. And when coal is burned, it creates sulfur dioxide. When they combine, it becomes smog. In 1952, London had so much of these three that it caused a deadly smog to pollute the air. Health Effects The Great Smog of London was estimated to cause 4,000 to 13,000 deaths which mostly consisted of elders, infants, and children. Only around 4,000 actually died during the event, of which many were caused because of damage to the heart and lungs or from illnesses like bronchial asthma and pneumonia. It was even noted that 500 people died in one day during this horrid event. Patients' lips turned blue as they died due to the toxic smog. This smog also increased the chances of children getting asthma. The rest of the deaths occurred after the smog passed, mostly because the patient's conditions left them a few days to live. Epidemiologist and environmental advocate Davis and her colleagues analyzed data from the next several months and found that around 13,000 more people died between December and March. Most of these deaths were caused by pneumonia, but the government tried to blame a bad flu season rather than the great smog. Community and social effects. Once here, the fog comes to stay. Slowing down traffic of all kinds, cutting down visibility to a dangerous degree, putting a premium on how to get to work, and more important still, some may think, on how to get home. In addition to the effect on health, the community was impacted severely. Throughout the communities of London, many schools and businesses were closed due to the terrible conditions. 
Parents kept their kids at home even if their schools were open to keep them safe. Transportation such as airports and boats were closed down. People even had to abandon their cars because they couldn't find them. One of the only transportation units that wasn't closed down was the underground train system. In addition to this, property crimes increased as a result of how easily criminals could get away. One girl was even stabbed with a stiletto in the fog. Hospitals weren't able to close even if the smog permeated throughout their building because they had to take care of the people affected. Maureen Scholes, a nurse at that time, states, You couldn't see along the corridor that you walked in when you came on duty. You couldn't actually see from one end of the ward to the other, and it's not that enormous a length. Dr. Waller, a doctor at another hospital during the Great Smog, confirms, In the wards where there were many patients, you couldn't see clearly to the end of the ward. There were many patients admitted, but there were far too many affected, and they apparently couldn't get into the hospital and perished outside. Environmental Effects Thousands of animals died due to the smog. Birds crashed into buildings because they couldn't see where they were going. And to make things worse, there was little to no wind in London at the time, making the smog seem even denser. Eyewitness Account It was thick, thick gray. It was like walking through a gray mass. You never saw a clearing. It was such a shock. I walked out the door, and I put my hand out and I couldn't see it. You know, I'd hear the steps of somebody walking behind and think I was going to be mugged or something. Under my dress, I would always wore a long slip, and usually a white slip. It was kind of amazing. I had, couldn't believe that this happened. I took off my slip, slip one night, and do you know the whole bottom half from the waist down was, it was a white slip. It was totally gray. Positive impacts. Though this was a deadly disaster, there were positive outcomes as a result of the smog. As soon as London realized it was tragic, they did everything they could to stop it. This is shown in this graph where the pollution decreased as soon as it worsened extensively. The smog caused the government to work much harder on health and environmental regulations, especially creating the Clean Air Act of 1956. This was a government act aimed to help control main sources of pollution with smokeless zones. The lower level of smoke pollution brought about by the clean air policy helped to reduce the number of deaths in the London smog in December, compared with the smog in 1952, says this newspaper, which was released during the smog in 1962. Cleaner types of coals were introduced, which would help decrease sulfur dioxide pollution. The smog also helped spread awareness throughout London about air quality and pollution. Awareness included learning how to make homemade masks in case they need to protect themselves from the smog. The newspaper also reads, Between 1952 and 1960, largely through the Clean Air Act, emissions of smoke in the London area as a whole went down from 141,000 tons to 89,000 tons, a fall of about 37%. The Clean Air Act of 1956 also influenced other countries such as China. According to Dr. Ren Zhang, we have given China some ideas of how to improve its air quality. Today, though these positive impacts helped, London is still facing air pollution problems today. According to The Guardian, about 9,500 people die in London every year due to air pollution. The pollution still causes asthma and other respiratory issues for these people there. According to Pacific Standard Magazine, in 2018, London exceeded its legal air pollution limit in January of that year. So, London definitely still needs to work on making improvements to their air quality. Overall, The Great Smog was a tragedy to all of London. The circumstances caused tragic things to happen and left a lasting impact on society. Fortunately, it ended triumphantly as the government created the Clean Air Act, which would help reduce air pollution. But sadly, air pollution is still a problem not only in London, but worldwide.